نحمد و نسلی و نسلم علی سیدنا و مولانا محمد رسول نبی الامین المکین الحنین الکریم الرعوف الرحیم اما بعد فعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الا ان اولیاء اللہ لا خوف علیہم ولا هم يحزنون صدق اللہ مولانا العظیم My dear viewers, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. I welcome you to another episode of the greatest Sufis. Alhamdulillah ta'ala, by the grace of Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and the utmost blessings of our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, we have in our previous episodes discussed many awliya Allah, many Sufi saints, but all of them which we discussed were Sufi saints who received their sainthood, who received their wilaya through the method of Wahab. And these were all awliya Allah, these were all awliyas, Sufis, who were born as Sufis, who were born as Waliullahs. The Sufi, the great Sufi, which we are discussing today, is the Sufi who received his sainthood, received his friendship, his wilaya from Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the method of kasab. Yani he was not born as a Sufi. He was just a servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In fact, his early life, he spent most of it in total disobedience of Allah. He disobeyed the commandments of Allah. But later on, through kasab, through struggle, through striving, he received the status of Wilaya, the status of a great Sufi. This great Sufi which we are discussing today is a source of inspiration for the Sufis after him. His name is Sheikh Sultan Ibrahim bin Adham, Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Alayhi. Sheikh Sultan Ibrahim bin Adham, Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Alayhi, was born in Balakh, in the east of Khurasan. His family was from Kufa. This great Sheikh, great Sufi, Sheikh Hazrat Ibrahim bin Adham, is the great Sufi who was introduced in the West by a great writer, James Henry Lee Hunt. He wrote a poem about this great Sufi. This poem was entitled Abu bin Adham in 1838. This Western writer he wrote this beautiful poem about Hazrat Shaykh Sultan Ibrahim bin Adham and called it Abu bin Adham. And in this, he narrated a very beautiful story. The story which reflects the true message of Sufism. And the story goes like this. Abu bin Adham, Sultan Ibrahim bin Adham was sitting and the angel came and an angel came down. And this angel was writing in front of him something on a piece of paper. He asked the angel, what are you writing? The angel said, I'm writing the names of those who are loved by our creator, loved by Allah. I'm writing their names. Ibrahim bin Adham asked, is my name among these people? The angel said, no, your name is not among these people. The angel went back. The next day, on the same place, the same angel came down. Sheikh Ibrahim bin Adham asked again, that is my name among the people who are loved by Allah? No, your name is not among them. Sheikh Ibrahim bin Adham said, Can you do me a favor? Can you put my name, write my name in the list of those people who love the creation of Allah, who love other fellow human beings? Can you write my name at least in that list? The angel said, Okay, I will do that. The angel wrote the name. And the next day again the angel came. And he asked the angel, on the list of those who are loved by Allah. Is my name there? The angel was surprised and said, Yes, in fact, your name is on top of the list. You are, your name is on top of the list of those who are loved by Allah, by the Creator. So the story, this story of Sheikh Sultan Ibrahim bin Adham tells us that if you love, if you want to be loved by Allah, if you want to be loved by the Creator, then one way of getting His love receiving his love and becoming the beloved of Allah is first of all to love his creation because his creation will reflect him 
if you love the creation of Allah by thinking that they are created by my beloved Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in return will love you also. This Shaykh, this Shaykh Sultan Ibrahim bin Adham was born in Balakh in east of Khurasan. His family was from Kufa and he was in fact a descendant of the second Caliph, Khalifa, Sayyidina Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu. The Shaykh Sultan Ibrahim bin Adham is Sufi was the ruler of his time. He was the king of that time. He was the king who became famous for abandoning and boycotting his kinghood, his royal title, just for the sake of Allah, just in search for the love of Allah, in search of the love of the whole Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in search of the truth. He left everything. But how did it all start? As I said, he was a person who disobeyed Allah early, in his early year, time, early years. He was busy with the worldly affairs. And, mo and he was the king, he was the ruler. So he mostly forgot his rights towards his creator, towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Once he was at the barber, and the barber was cutting his hair, he gave a, he gave a bag full of coins, golden coins to this barber as a reward. This barber suddenly at the same place in front of his shop, a poor person, a beggar came. And he said, could someone give me something? I am poor and I need money. He begged the same barber who was cutting the hair of the king at that time. He received this bag from the king. At the same spot, this beggar came. The same barber gave the bag. He didn't know what is in the bag, but he gave the bag to this beggar. And he said, you take it, go. The king was surprised. And he said, do you know what was in the bag? There were golden uh, pieces of co coins. And the king, when he said this, the barber didn't, didn't wasn't shocked. The, the barber didn't even look sad. In fact, he said, Alhamdulillah. And the Sultan Ibrahim bin Adam, this king was also again shocked and surprised. Are you not sad that you just gave away so much wealth to that beggar? He said, no, Allah is the one who gave me. And I returned it back to someone who belonged to Allah, a creation of Allah. Sultan Ibrahim bin Adham was very shocked and surprised and this left a very big impression on his life. After a couple of days, Sultan Ibrahim bin Adham was once sleeping in his room, in his palace, royal palace. On top of the roof, he heard some footsteps. He went out of the balcony to see who was walking and he shouted, who is walking on the roof? And he was answered by someone, I am looking for something which belongs to me. Who are you and what are you looking for? I am a servant of Allah and I am looking for my camel. The king shouted, Sultan Ibrahim bin Adham, you are looking for your camel on top of my roof, the roof of the royal palace? Are you out of your mind? How can you find your camel on, on, on the roof of my roof? This person said, Ibrahim bin Adham, how strange you are. You are trying to search for Allah. You are trying to search for your creator while you are living and while you are sleeping with all the luxury you have now, with all the luxuries around you. How can you find Allah with all your luxuries, with being a king? The same way you are telling me, how can I find my camel on top of your roof? I'm asking you the same question. You want to search for Allah. You want to search for the truth. How can you find the truth when you are surrounded by these materialistic affairs? This again left a very strong impression, effect on the heart of Ibrahim bin Adham. The next day, Sultan Ibrahim bin Adham was sitting in his court. And all the servants were standing in rows. And suddenly a person who was unknown in that area, a person with white clothes, with a lot of respect, dignity, self-respect, he entered the palace. Nobody had the courage to stop him, not even the servants, not even the guards. And this person came in front of the king, Sultan Ibrahim bin Adam, and addressed him, O king, I am a traveler and I would like to stay overnight here. I would like to sleep. I'm looking for a hotel. This king, Sultan Ibrahim bin Adam, said, Are you out of your mind? Do you think this is a hotel? This is my palace. This person asked him, Well, tell me, if this is not a hotel, answer my question. Who was here before you? Who used to live in this palace before you? My father? 
king replied, who was living before your father? My grandfather lived here before my father. And who lived before your grandfather? Well, before him, my grand grandfather lived here. Okay, right. Who is going to live after you in this palace? My son. And who after them? Well, his child, his children. And this person said, well, I understand. I'm, uh, my understanding is that people come, they spend their time, and then they go. So if this is not a hotel, the same thing happens in hotels. People come in a hotel, they spend the time they want to spend, one day, two days, three days, or three nights, and then the next, after that, they go away. So they are travelers. So what I understand is the same place. This is also a hotel because people come and they go. You will go also one day. And suddenly this person then again went back. This again left a very important, very important effect on the heart of Sheikh Ibrahim bin Adham. When he was told this, again this person said, Oh Ibrahim bin Adham, you are sitting on the throne. You have all the luxuries in your life. You want to search for Allah, you will not find Allah in here. You have to go through faqr. You have to go through poverty. You have to go through humiliation. You have to go through humbleness and through reaching and going through these stages, the stages of tariqah, of taqwa, of tasawwuf, you will find Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The same spot, Sheikh Ibrahim bin Adham, the king of that time, the ruler of that time, he stood up from his throne and he addressed his wife and he said, Oh my wife, listen, if you want talaq from me, I will give you talaq. But now, please forgive all the rights which I am due to you, which are due towards you. Let me, allow me to go and I want to seclude myself from everything. His wife said, please take me with me. And he said, no, I can't take you. You have some responsibilities towards the Raya, towards the nation. You are the queen now. My child is the, the crown prince. He is the king now since I am going. So let him serve the people, but I don't have anything to do. So Sheikh Ibrahim bin Adham from the same sp uh, uh, place, the same day, same time when this suddenly this person came who was in fact Sayyidina Khizr alayhi salam this person Sultan Ibrahim bin Adam left his palace he abandoned his he abandoned his palace and left and he went towards Syria he spent nine years in seclusion nine years in seclusion in poverty he went to Syria so since nobody could recognize him that he was the ruler of Khurasan he was the ruler of Balakh he spent time there in extreme poverty in humbleness and he devoted all of his time for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He went to Nishapur also. He spent also some years in Nishapur in seclusion. During these times, what he used to do is every Friday he used to work and he used to collect wood from the jungle and sell this wood and he would get money, enough sufficient money so he could get some food. And when he bought food with that amount of money which he received through working the whole day, collecting wood from the jungle and selling it in the market, the same food he would then, half of it, share with other people, with other beggars, poor people, fuqara, and then he would eat some himself, and then he would give to the half of them to other fuqara. So one part for himself and the other part for the fuqara. And six days, what he used to do is, he used to only worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He was secluded, he detached himself from all the worldly affairs. And he used to live in a cave. In fact, there is a great saint, great saint, Sufi, Sheikh Abu Sa'id, who visited this same cave in which Ibrahim bin Adam spent many years in devotion for Allah, in doing ibadah for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this was here his, his remark of Sheikh Abu Sa'id where that this cave has such a great fragrance. If people would put fragrance in this, and they would fill it with utter, fill it with perfume, then that would not be, that would be nothing compared to the fragrance which I can smell here. And why is that fragrance here? That fragrance is because one of the Sufis, one of the saints, friends of Allah, Ibrahim bin Adham, spent time here, he worshipped Allah in this cave. This is what, this fragrance comes because of that. The viewers, we're going to a short break, inshallah, Aziz. After this break, we'll discuss, we'll continue with the life of Sheikh Ibrahim bin Adham, rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi.